Hi guys, we're back here with Mary Dalton. She's with Missoula Asian Service. She's an ombudsman. I completely butchered that, obviously. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk a little bit about Residence Rights Month. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what the importance of residents and their rights. Yeah, well, thanks for having me today. So I work at Missoula Aging Services, and the Ombudsman Program is one of many programs at Missoula Aging Services. And we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for those for them. So with the Ombudsman Program, I am an advocate for people who live in long-term care. Um, October is Resident Rights Month, so it's a time to sort of focus on and bring, bring attention to the rights of residents who live in long-term care in Missoula County. Um, this year's theme is Stand for Quality. So we want to talk a little bit about Stand for Quality. What does that mean? Uh, quality of care, quality of life, quality of services, um, overall quality of the experience of the services and the care that people in long-term care are receiving. And what are some of the misconceptions of long-term care? Some of the misconceptions, I think, um, so in Missoula County, we have uh, four skilled nursing facilities and we have approximately 15 assisted livings. Some of those are typically older adults, what you might stereotypically consider older adults. Um, there are a lot of younger people in long-term care, um, maybe people with a physical or mental disability and they need that type of um, supportive services and long-term care. Um, so we talk about the cornerstone of the Ombudsman program is resident rights. And Try, trying to focus on the individual and what that individual might, what might be important for that individual. What, what would be their preferences, their choices, including them in decisions that are being made. Um, so when we talk about Resident Rights Month, we want to really honor the individual and their preferences and um, focus on quality of care and what's important for the individual rather than what's important for the for the system. Right, and you uh, and you act as an advocate for a lot of the residents as well, trying to connect them to the right pieces. That That's exactly right. I've, I visit on a regular basis. We have another half-time ombudsman in our office and we visit all of the facilities. Uh, we might go in just as a routine visit to build relationships with people or we might go in on a complaint visit. We, we get complaints from um, People at the nursing home will call us, the staff will call us, the residents will call us, family will call us, friends, um, other organizations that we partner right. with might call. Um, what, what is the most common complaint that you hear? You know, they, they range across the board. Some, you know, we do talk a lot about food complaints because food is such an essential part of all of our lives. And, you know, it's, it's built into our history, it's built into our culture, it's how we celebrate. It's just such a, a fabric of our everyday being that I, I work a lot with food council meetings and trying to, trying to get people um, the nutrition and the food preferences that right. they like. So that, that's a, a big one. Um, although it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal for when we talk about quality of care, food is very important. And, you know, if you think about yourself and everyday right. life, I mean, what, what are some of the, the foods that you enjoy and how would you feel if you weren't able to get some yeah. of those foods? That actually is a great example because I have a, um, a new uh, roommate who doesn't have a car. And that's just like one of the things that, you know, as you're Asian as well, is that you, you, you don't necessarily have access to cars because a lot of times you're not fit to drive a car when you get to a certain age. Mm -hmm. But he's a younger guy, mm -hmm. so he has the ability to maybe jump on a bike and just ride to the nearest grocery store and stuff like that. You know, a couple times I want to help him out here and there, but he's technically on his own. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, this is kind of how it is for a lot of people. You can make, you live in the same facility as somebody else, but you just don't understand exactly what their needs are. Exactly. So yeah. um, I think it just like travel in general, just being able to get from one mm. place to another is a big deal, especially for residents since, um, you know, some people are homebound, some people have to have certain access to certain things because you were saying that like the youngest, um, you know, like the younger populations who are also, you know, stuck inside. Yeah. Uh, like mm -hmm. the whole stuck inside thing is, it's, it's relative, but a lot of times they don't have the same opportunities to be able to go out and be out. Right, yeah, and a lot of people that I see that are living in long-term care, their meals are prepared for them by the facility staff, and oftentimes the menu is determined by the facility staff or maybe a bigger corporation of the facility. 
Um, oftentimes there's a dietitian involved because they have to meet certain standards of you know daily requirements and that kinds of thing. But um, you know, what if the food that you know your favorite meal was served in front of you and it wasn't prepared correctly? Right. Or maybe it was too done, or it wasn't, or it wasn't how you would like it. It didn't have the spiciness that you would like. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, that really takes away from quality of life when you can't get to some of those little small preferences that are big things for people yeah. and things that people look forward to all day long. Yeah. So uh, if you're uh, homebound and you're always looking for help, but maybe you just like want to get in contact with you, where can people go? So you can uh, call us at Missoula Aging Services. Our number is 728. 7682 or you can visit us on the web at missoulaagingservices.org yep. and I would be more than happy to visit with people about resident rights. We do confidential consultations um, and just encourage you to get out and visit with people that you might know that are in long-term care and provide some of that socialization and interaction with the folks that are living in long-term care. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Because you said you wanted to uh, try something a little different today as well. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I just wanted to do a little interactive um, action with you yeah. and talk to you about hypothetically, if you were in, say, a long-term care facility, say something happened and you needed some extra care, what, you know, just thinking about sort of your activities of like. You know, we all have habits of a lifetime. Right. You know, some of us get up in the morning, we have our coffee right away, others don't like to eat till 10 o'clock, or, you know, we have all these different habits that make our lives work. So what would be a quality of life for you if you had to be in long-term care? What would quality of life mean for you? I think, uh, you know, like one of the biggest things is, is I live on a, in a two-story place, so getting to my room on the second floor is a task in, in, in itself. You know, like I'm young, I, I can handle it now, but like you said, I was like, I don't know what I would do. Like if mm -hmm. I, if, if for any reason, maybe I hurt my back, hurt a leg, just like a, a, a simple minor thing. Exactly. Like even if I hurt yeah. my arm. Temporary. Like you can't grab the railing when you're going up the stairs yeah. and you could still hurt yourself from further, further damage. Right. And so, and so if you were in a situation where you were laid up and needed help, I mean, what kinds of, what kinds of activities would you enjoy that would entertain you in a way that was meaningful to you? What kinds of activities? I guess uh, video games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a lot of people are really getting into those kind of video games. You know, like it's getting more interactive with, you know, virtual reality and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Even like 360 video, people are really liking that kind of stuff. Right. Being able to see a 360 environment without leaving their house. Right. And, and for me, that wouldn't even cross my radar. It's like a video game would be the last thing I ever thought right. about. So when you think about being in long-term care and being, having to have other people care for you and help you with these quality of life things, what if, what if there was no one there to help you get a video game and there you would be without something that would be important to you? So having an advocate or having family or being able to communicate that with the staff and having them honor those wishes would be something that right. would be very important. Because even like, you know, like you're homebound and you're being um, entertained from your house and it doesn't give you the same opportunities to be able to be go out. And mm -hmm. you, you know, like a lot of times, like, you know, like youth is wasted on the young, all that stuff. It's like, for me, it's even like, I always think to myself, should I be going out and doing some things? A lot of times I'm very homebound. Mm -hmm. I usually just, by choice, I usually mm -hmm. like to be at home a lot of times. Yeah. So it's like one of those things is like when you have the inability to be able to go out and do things, then you really regret missing out. I think that's right, a, that a choice good lesson. Is, that choice is taken away from you at that point because now you, you have the ability to choose. You can come or go, but if, you, if that choice is taken away from you, that takes away a lot of your, of your power and your options to choose. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, you know, one thing I think that we, we can all do for people in long-term care is just to reach out and to visit and to engage in those conversations with people that are in long-term care, asking them what quality of life means to them and just empowering them to let them know that they do have rights and they have a right to voice their, their um, choices and have those honored for them in a way that's meaningful for them. Yeah. So as you're, as you're celebrating October Resident Rights Month, it's something to keep in mind. Yep.
Well, thank you, Mary. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that's a good note to end on right there. I really appreciate you stopping by. You know, Missoula Agent Service comes on my show every month. They talk about many things that Missoula Agent Services does to the aging population. Um, the people, um, dignity, independence, and health of um, aging adults and those who care for them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank